In this uh, problem, we're going to solve for the shear force and bending moment diagrams uh, of the, the beam shown uh, using the direct method so that we can derive the actual equations of the shear force and bending moment diagram. Uh, so because the functions in this case are going to be discontinuous at the point of load application here at point P, we're going to have to break up our beam into the two domains. So I've labeled the first one here from zero or x is uh, greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one meter. And I'll go ahead and label the other side uh, where this is going to be from x greater than or equal to one meter and less than or equal to three meters. So I'm going to complete my partial free body diagram. I've laid out two lines upon which I'm going to build it. I'll pick up uh, my pen, draw in my applied load, so I have my reaction force here, uh, and I don't have any other applied load, but I am going to have my internal forces, so I will label them here, and a moment. I'll leave the, uh, the normal forces off, because they're going to go to zero in this case, and I don't want to complicate my diagram. BNX, M at X, 133.3 kilonewtons. And just to be clear, I'm going to label my x so that we can see what it is that we're doing. And for the shear force diagram, we have to solve some of the forces in the y direction equals zero, which is equal to, in this case, we have 133.3 kilonewtons uh, going up and v at x going down. And we rearrange that to v at x is equal to 133.3 kilonewtons. And that will be true over the entirety of the domain. So I can go over to my shear force diagram and I can draw that in and label it 133.3 kilonewtons. Carry right on on our bending moment diagram for that part of the domain. And of course, in this case, what we do is we solve our other equation of static equilibrium, which is the sum of the moments. And in this case, I'll choose point A to do it about is equal to zero. And in this case, we have uh, two uh, forces or moments without a line of action through point A. So we have, I'll do this clockwise as positive, and that would give us V at X multiplied by X minus M at X. So M at X is equal to V at X times X. However, I'm going to substitute in the 133.3 kilonewtons for V at X that we had from the, uh, the previous equation. So we end up with 133.3 X. And that's the equation of the line. I can go ahead and draw that in on my bending moment diagram. It will look something like that. Label the, t uh, or label the diagram with the equation 133.3 X m at x is equal to, and now we'll go ahead and do the second domain. So I'll complete my partial free body diagram and draw in my reaction. In this case, we have our point load applied at one meter. Again, we'll have v at x and m at x. And I will label X again. And we'll carry on with exactly the same process that we used before. So we'll have the sum of the forces in the Y direction equals zero, which in this case is equal to 133.3 kilonewtons minus 200 kilonewtons and minus V at X and that solves for V at X is equal to negative 66.7 kilonewtons. So we see that it is constant. And I'll go ahead and draw that in on our curve and finish off the shear force diagram by connecting the various lines. Negative 66.7 kilonewtons. One last thing to do, we'll do the sum of the moments about A equal to zero. 
Again, we'll do clockwise positive, which I will indicate here. We'll set that up. So what do we have? We have 200 kilonewtons multiplied by a distance of one meter, turning it clockwise, so it's positive. And we have V at X multiplied by X, again turning it positive, less M at X. So we'll substitute in again our minus 66.7 kilonewtons for our V at X, uh, as we solved for just previously which is equal to 200 kilonewton meters minus 66.7 kilonewtons times x minus m sub x or rearranged m at x is equal to 200 kilonewton meters minus 66.7 kilonewtons times x. So we'll go ahead and draw that in on our curve and we can label it m at x is equal to 200 minus 66.7 x. And that completes our shear force and bending moment diagrams using the direct method where we've been able to derive the equations for both curves and the same process would apply uh, irregardless of how complicated the beam uh, might be.